Here we go, guys. It's been probably 30 seconds. Um, I posted on my vlogging channel. So, and I told all you guys that I'm going to, this right here is the first video that is going to be on the, uh, my screen printing channel because I'm going to take everything to do with screen printing, put it on this channel. Um, any questions you have, you know, um, I'm just starting my screen printing business. What I had in Oklahoma was a test run just to see how it would do. Same company, same email, same everything. Um, I've just moved it to a place that's going to be more profitable, um, that I can do certain things. I am looking for a venture capitalist or an angel investor. I think I found one. Um, a friend of mine that is in... Um, that has a lot of connections. Um, he's trying to hook me up with this venture capitalist. That's going to put me in a position. I'm sorry. I did talk about this in the last video, but I'm trying to integrate screen printing into this channel, not my vlogging channel. So with that, that's going to allow me to be put in. I can get a house with a garage, possibly a basement. I don't know how I'm going to get the screen printing pressed down into the basement. Um, what, you know, that'll allow me to wire it up to put uh, 220 in there you know, and just build a shop the way it needs to be built in a basement. If not, I'll put it in the garage and give my kids the basement. Um, so let me show you what I've been doing and kind of get a rough draft of what's been going on and how I've made all of this happen. If you were, I'm also going to make a video. I don't know where I'm going to put it. If I'm going to put it here or the vlogging channel, probably here because it has to do with screen printing. So in Oklahoma, when I decided that I was moving to... Colorado from Oklahoma, I started looking for um, people in Colorado to invest in my business, whether it be a small amount, a large amount. I did find a gentleman. He did invest, ten, or, uh, sorry, $8,000. We haven't closed the deal all the way. So um, he's given me $6,500 so far. So with that, I bought this, which I've talked about this in my last channel. Um... This is a six color two station press. So these arms move, all right? And these heads, as you can see, have registration. These right here, close this down to hold the screen in. Um, these two knobs, you can't see it, there you go. This knob and this knob will loosen this head to allow it to move any way you want. And then there's a knob here and there's a knob right here these two knobs will move it if you move them together it'll move like this and then let me move around here and then this one uh, moves the head up oh, sorry like this so it's got six heads that do that and a lot of people are probably wondering why the pallet is where the screens go well the reason for that is let me move stuff around here um, before I tell you that, let me explain this. So you've got this bolt, there's a bolt here, and there's a bolt over here. And this allows this to go up and down. Usually if it's, if the head is all the way down, it'll make the head go like this. And then there's a bolt on this right here, there's a bolt on the other side, which is right here. This will make this tilt like, sorry, this. So it gives you an off contact, but this press, to eyeball it, this press to eyeball it makes it extremely hard to do off contact. Um, Screenprinting.com has their new 350 press that the two bolts that I showed you are now, let me turn this light on. Now, this light sucks. I don't have lighting in here yet. Um, that didn't do a damn bit of good, did it? No, nope, that made it worse. All right. So. I have no light whatsoever. All right, so there we go. That's a little better. So now they have knobs like this knob right here, this knob right here, that make that will take care of that. The press will go like this and like this. So the 350 press will do it. Um, this one here, I think it's just a junior, you know, six color. Uh, two station press. It's an amazing press. Don't get me wrong. I love this press. I will keep this press for as long as I possibly can. Um, this will, you know, probably be for smaller orders later. And then when I get into the bigger press, so if I get the uh, venture capitalist, 
um, investment, then I'll be getting an eight color uh, six station press, which will make it a little easier to um, re to register stuff. So, sorry if I'm rambling. All right, so you take this pallet here. This is where your shirts will go, and trying to do it, I chip my thing. So, the best way to do this is take a pallet and clip it and, you know, put it in like it was a screen, and then you would lower the pallet down like this. But before you do that, I used a piece of cardboard and put right here. So that would give me that would give me the proper thickness or the proper off contact because you want um, you know about the about the thickness of a quarter. So there's two ways you can do this. You would take a piece of cardboard, put right here. All right. Then you would lower your other plenum on top, okay, and then you would loosen this bolt, and then this bolt, and the bolt on the other side, and you'd kind of, I wouldn't say beat on it, but you would kind of wiggle it, tap it, and get it to lower itself, or right here, on all four corners of this one pallet, you would literally, you know, here you'd put your quarters here and just let it kind of rest, wiggle it a little bit, make sure your quarters don't move. You, you know, you, you can put some tape on it. Um, and then loosen those three bolts. And it should, it took me a few tries to get it right, um, but it should register with off contact. So your off contact is going to be awesome. I've heard that you can use plexiglass, but you gotta find it in, in the right thickness, which is like one eighth of an inch. Um, or if you're doing sweatshirts or anything with that thicker material, two quarters or two pieces of cardboard. I just use cardboard because you know I moved and I had boxes left. And I just used one and it worked perfect. Um, I haven't printed anything yet. I haven't gotten any clients, and I'm actually glad that I didn't. So let me take, let's go take the camera. And there. I don't want to show you in the living room. It needs to be cleaned. See, uh, all, my, all my Star Wars stuff. Huh? All right. So a printer that the, you know, an industry standard, um, a lot of contract or a lot of screen printers use the Epson uh, 1430, which is a large format photo printer, house printer, whatever. And the issue that I had is, here it is. The issue that I had... Um, the guy that I bought it from is the same guy that had this press. So he bought at ScreenPrinting.com for, I believe it's $2,000, or it could be a little more. But I, but I believe it's $2,000. So you buy, is you get the press, the flash unit, uh, a small expulsion unit, and you get some inks uh, and some screens. You get two different size mesh of screens, 156, and I don't remember what the other one is. Uh, I will look at that. In the next video and I'll kind of give you a thing of what goes into these things so and then separately um, and, yep, sorry sorry let's backtrack so you get the press the flash the expulsion unit you get uh, I think it's 10 screens you get a couple of inks a couple of chemicals um, mixing things where you can like mix your ink and stick it on your screen I don't know what they're called sorry um, and a few other little knickknacks with the big packages with, I think it's the ten, it's, it's either the $6,000 package or the $10,000 package, you used to get the Epson 1430. Um, when I called screen printing, they said these things were the devil, and I know why. So the Epson 1430 is an Epson printer they no longer make anymore. So this printer went from, I don't know how much it was before, I'm going to say five or 600 bucks. Now this thing's upwards in the $1,000, sometimes more expensive. So when you buy an Epson printer from ScreenPrinting.com, they sell you the printer and RIP software. So that's what this guy did. He bought the screen printing package and the Epson 1430. All right. So here is the Epson 1430. It's all opened because I was working on it. And they also sell you this. Uh, this is the all blackout system. Um, this all blackout system basically takes um, all of these colors 
and all of the ink cartridges are black, which here are the ink cartridges. So it makes the printer think that all of these pack, all of these are black, or all of these are the colors that it came, but they're all black. Oop. And here is the issue. If the printer sets for a couple of weeks, the ink will dry out. The printer will no longer work because the ink can't get through the head. The printer's not built for that. But it's a good thing, so you'd have to literally print something dummy out. You'd have to print a piece of paper or print a design that works the ink through. Here's the issue. When the guy bought... Now, I'm not talking bad about this guy. He's an awesome guy. I met him, talked to him. Um, when I get to a position, him and I are going to be probably doing a couple of things together. Um, I'm going to be offering stickers and banners and stuff like that, stuff that he does, because he does signs and banners and stuff like that. I've seen his work. Awesome. Um, he, he does amazing work. But he let this printer sit for 18 months, roughly what it is, because he decided he didn't want to do it anymore, and he put it for sale. Um, he actually held this package for me for like five or six months because I was the first one to ask about it. I was the first one that inquired about it. When I got to Colorado Springs, it's the one of the first things I did is I went and bought that package, had to put it all together. But the Epson 1400 decided not to work. So I'm going to make a video. It's going to be a short video on how to fix it. So if you guys ever find a used one and it doesn't work, it won't print on anything, the next video I make is going to show you how to do that. Um, and it's not expensive. I did it. I fixed my printer. I went and bought, um, I went and bought, uh, ink cartridges from a, another company, like the actual ink cartridges that go for this printer. I cleaned the head out. I cleaned it and cleaned it and cleaned it and cleaned it and cleaned it. And she works. Um, I just printed out a dummy thing. Um, and this comes from the Epson 1430. So, but also another thing with this package that he ordered extra which you can get it with this printer, is Separation Studio. So instead of using um, uh, Photoshop or the other one I'm drawing a blank, can't figure it out, you can use this, or you can use Separation Studio. Once I get to using it, I'll make a video on it, um, rate it. So I paid $3,000 for the printer, flash unit, um, the Epson printer, the RIP software, separating studio, a bunch of inks, a bunch of screens, a bunch of chemicals, some of them I've got to throw out um, because it's not good. Um, I'm also going to contact probably Monday a distributor because now that this Epson printer works, I can now print anything. Now I will be upgrading eventually to the Epson P400 and I'm going to rate these things side by side. I was hoping to get that done. I, I, or I was hoping to get one. A friend of mine owns a clothing line. He tried everything in his power to get me that printer, and then I was going to cut him a huge discount on his print. He couldn't make it happen. So when he told me that, I bought the ink cartridges, started cleaning out this printer the best I could, and she works. So um, I'm, you know, I'm really hoping that I'm not boring you guys. Um, let me get these videos put up. I'm going to make another video on how to clean the Epson. Um, 1430. Like I said, so far that I can sell, I've been wanting this printer for about a year. I finally got the opportunity to get it. I got it. So now the only thing I really can't do, I can try it. I don't know if I can do it, is sweatshirts. I am going to try to do that to see how it would do with because I don't have a dryer. Um, venture capitalist, I am getting a dryer. So sorry for the ramble. We're almost at 15 minutes, so let me cut this video off. Let me get these videos put up, and I will make a video on how to fix this printer. Um, I'm not taking the ink cartridges out because they're a pain in the butt to get back in and to get the printer to register it, but I'll give you the general gist of it. I'll even see if I can find a picture on the Internet and just do it from the computer. Um, so this is the first video. Sorry for the rambling. Click that subscribe button. Uh, like the video, comment on the video. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I will be glad to answer them. All right, guys. Peace out, and I'll see you guys in the next one.